What if we were to ask ourselves, how intricate is the dance of proteins within even the simplest of cells? It's a question that teases the mind and tickles the curiosity, doesn't it? At the heart of this dance, we find protein-protein interactions, a fascinating ballet of biochemical activity. Each protein, a complex molecule created by an intricate sequence of amino acids, interacts with others in ways that are as diverse as they are numerous. These interactions form the basis for most of the processes in our cells, from transporting substances to fighting diseases. This biochemical ballet is not a random jumble of dancers, but a carefully choreographed performance. Each protein has a specific role, a dance partner, or several, and a unique set of steps to follow. As a result, the complexity of these interactions is staggering. Consider the humble yeast cell, the simplest of eukaryotes. A recent paper from November 2023 titled The Social and Structural Architecture of the Yeast Protein Interactomy found a network of nearly 4,000 proteins connected by over 30,000 interactions and revealed that the vast majority of yeast proteins are highly connected with an average of 16 interactors per protein. This is double the number of proteins and triple the number of interactions previously known. And remember, this is in yeast, a relatively simple organism. Imagine the much higher complexity of the protein interactomy in higher organisms with cells that have tens of thousands of proteins. This complexity, this intricate dance, challenges the adequacy of Darwinian processes of random mutation and natural selection to explain protein-protein interactions. The development of a new protein-protein binding site, according to Michael Behe in his book Edge of Evolution, is as difficult as the development of resistance to chloroquine in the malaria parasite. As Dr. Behe states, generating a single new cellular protein-protein binding site is of the same order of difficulty or worse, than the development of chloroquine resistance to the malarial parasite. The likelihood of developing two binding sites in a protein complex would be the square of the probability of developing one. A double chloroquine complexity cluster, 10 to the power of 20 times 10 to the power of 20, which is 10 to the power of 40. There have likely been fewer than 10 to the power of 40 cells in the entire world in the past 4 billion years, so the odds are against a single event of this variety, just two binding protein-protein binding sites being generated by accident in the history of life. It is biologically unreasonable. In short, Darwinian processes are found to be grossly inadequate to explain the protein interactomy. In 2014, a study further validated Behe's claim, finding that at least two mutations to the protein PFCRT are required before chloroquine resistance appears in the malaria parasite. As Behe stated at the time, this is not an argument anymore that Darwinism cannot make complex functional systems. It is an observation that it does not. A 2009 article in Nature titled Untangling the Protein Web, which also studied the yeast protein interaction network, highlighted just how undarwinian the nature of the protein-protein interaction network is. In the article, it is stated, Vidal thinks the technological improvements, especially in nanotechnology, to generate more data and microscopy to explore interactions inside cells, along with increased computer power, are required to push systems biology forward. Combine all this and you can start to think that maybe some of the information flow can be captured. But when it comes to figuring out the best way to explore information flow in cells, Tyers jokes that it is like comparing different degrees of infinity. The interesting point coming out of all these studies is how complex these systems are, the different feedback loops and how they cross-regulate each other and adapt to perturbations are only just becoming apparent, he says. The simple pathway models are a gross oversimplification of what is actually happening. In summary, Darwinian processes fall short by many orders of magnitude in explaining the intricate dance of protein-protein interactions in even a simple yeast cell. The complexity only escalates dramatically in the cells of higher organisms with tens of thousands of proteins. The dance of proteins and multitude of ways in which proteins are found to interact with each other follows an intricate choreography that is far, far more complex than Darwinian processes can possibly account for. If Darwinian evolution were a normal science instead of being basically a religion for atheists, these findings should forever falsify Darwin's theory and leave it on the trash heap of the numerous other failed scientific theories in the history of science such as Einstein's static universe, luminiferous ether, and phrenology.